Hi, ihr. Willkommen an den Gefangsgeräten und äh, zum Talk Attacking and Defending Kubernetes. Äh, wir konnten für heute einen tollen Referenten von der Artix AG gewinnen, Andy Wirtz, Senior Consultant. Er ist jemand, der sich gerne mit aktueller Technik befasst und herausfindet, wo die Grenzen sind. Und deswegen möchte er uns heute zeigen, wie man ein Kubernetes-Cluster eine Technologie, mit der wir alle tagtäglich zu tun haben, angreift und auch entsprechend, wie man sich gegen solche Angriffe schützt. Sollten Fragen während des Vortrags auftauchen, scheut euch nicht, sie zu stellen. Wir werden die Fragen im Laufe des Vortrags clustern und haben anschließend ausreichend Zeit, uns damit zu befassen. So, und damit möchte ich euch nicht länger warten lassen. Andy, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Lucas, for the nice introduction. And yeah, I will continue this talk in the English language. Uh, I will start uh, with the screen share. And yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to this webinar. Um, yeah, in the media, we see it uh, all the time. Uh, we have some security issues, cybersecurity attacks. And uh, yeah, uh, one example here, uh, one very big one, a data breach uh, in Capital One. Uh, another uh, thing that is really in is crypto mining attacks. Uh, with, uh, for example, yeah, on Docker Hub, on Microsoft Azure, and, and yeah, very famous in 2018, uh, Tesla, um, uh, the Tesla hack, uh, where a Kubernetes dashboard was uh, publicly available. Um, and uh, Jenkins is another example, yeah. Uh, and, and what have these things all in common? They, they have something to do with the container technology, they have something to do with, uh, with Kubernetes, they are Kubernetes security issues. And uh, yeah, with these, this introduction, I will also say a couple of words about myself. Um, yeah, I am senior IT consultant at uh, ATIX in Germany, Munich, Germany. Um, I am certified Kubernetes when it comes to administration and security. And um, uh, yeah, so I prepared myself for, uh, for the last certification I did. And uh, with this preparation, I learned a lot. And I want to share uh, a couple of things um, um, about uh, this topic of uh, securing Kubernetes with focusing on Kubernetes. The agenda is as such for this webinar. Um, yeah, first we will talk about uh, attacking Kubernetes. Why should we do it or why is it attractive? <laughs> Not why should we do it, but why is it attractive for some hacker to, uh, uh, to attack, especially a Kubernetes cluster. And then I want to present uh, you a uh, yeah, somehow ugly attack path where we will work with privilege escalation to uh, get uh, cluster admin rights, to, uh, to break out of a container and to do some, uh, some crypto mining. Um, after that, I want to show you yeah, that Kubernetes brings all the mechanisms uh, needed to, uh, to avoid such an attack. Yeah. And so this demo is especially prepared. Uh, the Kubernetes cluster is simply misconfigured. We will end with a nice security checklist, um, uh, which is um, yeah, somehow complete, but you could always do it a bit bigger. Um, yeah. Let's start with the attack surfaces um, in Kubernetes. Um, and first of all, the question, why is it so attractive for, uh, for hackers to attack Kubernetes? Yeah, first of all, Kubernetes is something like a, uh, a virtual data center for container applications. It 
manages uh, compute resources and um, and uh, and yeah, very, they call it uh, the uh, the operating system of the cloud or the operating system of the future. But uh, but in reality, the future is already here. So uh, Kubernetes is very very widely used, and that makes it uh, that makes it very attractive. Uh, for attackers, and an additional thing is that Kubernetes is a very, very big um, software tool, and as such, uh, it has a, a certain complexity. And um, and yeah, to understand everything, to understand every uh, attack surface um, is, uh, is difficult if you uh, use uh, Kubernetes, and so uh, uh, yeah. There, there might be an open gate. And um, yeah, so I listed four main uh, options. Uh, or so uh, four main things here we can attack. Um, it is the Kubernetes API server, the worker nodes itself, the uh, container network, and the Compute resources of the cluster, and uh, let's uh, let's talk about all four in the next slides. So, what does this mean? Um, the Kubernetes API. So, uh, uh, Kubernetes is a system with masters. Master uh, nodes have always a lot of privileges. The control plane of Kubernetes uh, can do a lot with um, with the compute resources uh, of the cluster, and so. Um, yeah, uh, the Kubernetes API server um, is, uh, is the thing we have to secure because when we as a user or when, when some uh, third party tools or when the containers in the cluster uh, want to talk to Kubernetes and they are, uh, yeah, they have bad intentions, then um, then, and they have the privileges to talk to Kubernetes, then uh, they can do uh, a lot of bad things. So the Kubernetes API server is, uh, is the important thing. And um, to, uh, when we are talking to Kubernetes, and all other components of Kubernetes should not be available for communication. For example, uh, etcd, the, um, the NoSQL database, uh, this should not be uh, available for direct uh, communication. And so uh, we have some access control uh, for, for, uh, for interacting with the Kubernetes API server. And the question is, yeah, can we, uh, can we annul it? Can, uh, can we do some privilege escalation and, and be able to, um, to do more than Normally, we should be able to, and and so what could be the access that should not be allowed? Um, already, read access um, is uh, is critical because, uh, yeah, in in the database of Kubernetes, uh, there might be some accounts, some secrets, some sensitive data. So it's not only about write or administer. Uh, administrative access, it's also about read access that has to be secure. Uh, what do I mean with write access? It's about creating new, new container, new um, Kubernetes objects, updating them, deleting them. Um, and in the end, yeah, when, when you gain uh, administer, uh, administrative um, access, then everything is lost, basically. Uh, and then we can do everything with the cluster and the nodes under the cluster. Um, another thing uh, we want, or the attacker might want to attack, are the servers or the virtual machines um, that, uh, that are the worker nodes. Um, the good thing uh, in Kubernetes is they are all the worker nodes are basically abstracted away, so the user of the cluster does not need to think in terms of, of nodes anymore, but they are still there. They are still 
existing. And the question here is, is the isolation between the containers running in, um, in the cluster? Uh, is the isolation between the container and the container hosts uh, good enough or uh, can it be softened? Um, yeah, and the big fear in, in the container world is always the so-called container outbreak. So uh, what if a proce process running in a container breaks out and is now uh, running freely on, on, the, um, on the container node uh, or the container host? And, and the main problem here is that we do not have a user mapping of, of the of the privileged user root. Um, so, uh, so the user root in the container uh, equals the user, uh, the, the user root on the host. And this is a big, big fear in, in the container world and, uh, and a big issue. Um, the next thing is, uh, is the container network. This is an interesting concept in Kubernetes because by design, the container network is flat. So everything can talk to everything. Every container can talk to every other container. And, um, and this is uh, somehow uh, yeah, a, de a design feature, but when it comes to, to security aspects, it's, it's really horrible. So, uh, so in the first step by design, it is flat and every, every container can talk to everything. And, uh, and now in a second step, we have to secure it. Otherwise, yeah, the container can download uh, stuff from the internet, can talk to other apps and so on. Can, can ask for, for, for sensitive data again. Yeah. And um, yeah, the last thing is um, the, uh, we could attack the, um, the compute resources, and that basically means um, yeah, CPU, RAM, this, um, and when, when we are not securing the compute resources, uh, they can be used for something like crypto mining. Yeah, so this is, um, these are the four um, things we could attack. And in the next demo, I want to show you how we could do that. Why, uh, why, do we, uh, why do I want to show you a demo? I always find these aspects I mentioned very, um, yeah, very theoretical or not, uh, that, that, that I cannot not really touch them or visualize them, but I'm I'm someone who likes to visualize things and to uh, to understand things by doing it. And something like a container outbreak, for example. Uh, so I I heard about this for years, but as I never did it myself, um, I I couldn't really uh, grasp the uh, the severity of of this issue. And, and yes, so I think a, a demo helps with that. And so what are our goals of this attack? Um, it is uh, displayed here a bit. Uh, so um, we will start in our web browser with a web application. And, um, and the first step is to, um, to create a reverse shell to um, to log into the container running in Kubernetes. So the web application is running in Kubernetes, but the, the account of this container has just view access. And so we want to uh, get um, have a, a bit of privilege escalation and uh, get some more um, access when, when it comes to talking to Kubernetes. Uh, in the next step, uh, we want to create a new container. And this uh, new container should run as the root user. And it should have 
uh, in addition some some file access or also access on the file system of the container host um, and with the help of that uh, we want to escalate the privileges again in this um, in this new container uh, to get cluster admin access and yeah when we are cluster admin in kubernetes everything is basically lost so we can if there are some security measurements we could uh, we could annul them um, and yeah then in the last step we will create a breakout container uh, so that we will be root on the host and there we want to do crypto mining um, and we want to do it uh, yeah, somehow under the radar so that the typical Kubernetes cluster admin doesn't seize um, the container that it is doing the crypto mining. So with these words, let's jump into our terminal. And um, and let's jump into our web app. So our web app is uh, maybe well known. Uh, it is the uh, DVWA, the Dam Vulnerable Web Application, and it is uh, somehow yeah, a tutorial-like application to show certain uh, vulnerabilities inside of web applications. And this is now one page that is called command injection. And with this uh, web page, we, we will see how to, uh, how to crack open or how to come from this web page into a, a terminal in which, um, so, so we have a reverse shell to this. Um, uh, to this uh, web application. So um, let's let's have a look. Uh, what can we do with this web page? We can ping a server. So we can submit, and after a couple of uh, seconds, it will show us this one. But command injection means, uh, yeah, we can do more than that. We can uh, also, uh, uh, in our case, um, put an additional command with this Linux pipe, and then, for example, ID, and let's have a look if this is working. Yes, so what we basically did, we, uh, did uh, a command injection. So after my server IP, um, I, I injected an additional uh, command like ID. Uh, ID in Linux means uh, yeah, I want to get the user ID and the username, and group ID, and so on. And yeah, he is he is responding to that. So I can also ask for more to get some more information about this server. Uh, Uname-a will show me, um, yeah, that it is indeed a Linux server. The host name is, is giving me a hint that this might be a server in, in, uh, running inside of a container in Kubernetes. We see a kernel version that is very, very old that might be might come in handy later. Uh, so, but yeah, let's let's get more information. And um, with this one, um, yeah, because it looks like CentOS, um, I, I want to see if, uh, if this file exists. Um, but no, this file doesn't exist because CentOS might be the uh, the, the host, but I'm inside of the container, so I do not see that file. And uh, yeah, the last thing uh, to, to get some more understanding is PS, to see a process list. If this is now a long, long list, then it might, uh, I might be wrong, but it's not a long list. And, and so it, it really looks as if this is 
a, um, a container. So in virtual machines, this is 100 processes or more. Okay, I can work with that. And, and yeah, now let's try to get some kind of uh, reverse shell. Um, for that, uh, I will switch to my, uh, my terminal and I will use netcut for that. And, um, and with this command, now this terminal is listening um, and yeah, and, and my hope is that I can, uh, I can create some kind of tunnel here and so uh, that, uh, that I can, for example, use the same commands uh, from this terminal that I typed into the web browser. So now let's uh, go to the web browser again and uh, let's type in this one. So first we have again the, the IP and then a netcut command and let's submit it. And behind you already saw something happened here. So we have some kind of a connection and yeah, let's, let's have a look. And uh, I can use the same commands again. Yes, it seems to work. Uh, so now in this terminal, so I'm inside of the container now. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately I'm not the root user, uh, but, uh, but I'm, I'm a normal user. So it would be nicer to be it root user here, um, yeah, some, some kind of uh, yeah, host name I have here, okay. Uh, so, but, but yeah, also the other commands, um, like the ps command, um, yeah. So it's the same output. Um, as this terminal is a bit tricky, I will now switch, but I wanted to show you how we could uh, have a reverse shell, but next I would change into a, a bit easier um, uh, shell um, so that I do not need to use this, this shell from Netcat. And so I continue here, but uh, you can trust me, it's, it's basically the same user, so I can use the uh, the commands again, and you will see um, it is the same answer. But uh, but the thing here is nicer that because I really get an answer that, for example, the uh, the file does not exist. Okay, I can work with that, and yeah. So now the next thing I want to do is to talk to Kubernetes. Um, but uh, instead uh, of using curl, I, I will install kubectl. Uh, kubectl uh, is the command uh, line tool, a, a utility to talk to Kubernetes, and, um, um, and, and that is uh, very, uh, yeah, this is uh, way more comfortable. Um, uh, he, he tells me failed uh, because I downloaded it already earlier when I prepared the demo. So this is uh, this is not a problem at this point. And but in the end, yeah, this uh, this download and uh, the installation was was successful. So now I have kubectl inside of the container and uh, and ready to use in a, a recent version. Um, yeah, and, and with, with kubectl, I can really now um, have, a, have a lot of uh, information, uh, what, what I'm allowed to do and what not. For example, this was something that didn't work. Um,
So let's try it again. And yeah, what I just now used is a command called um, uh, cubecuddle of can I? And with that command, I can list um, the, um, the things I'm allowed to do with this uh, in, inside of this container. So this container has some kind of identity, uh, and this identity is allowed to uh, to have a lot of view rights when I see it correct. So get list and watch. Um, and yeah, but this is only a list. Let's uh, let's uh, check a couple of other commands. With the next command, I'm asking Kubernetes if I am a cluster admin. So basically, can I? And then we have a verb, and then we have a um, a Kubernetes object. So and the cluster admin can act with every verb and with every object, but this is unfortunately not allowed. Um, another thing I want to ask is, can I create daemon sets? Uh, so can I create some containers on, on, every, on every node? Unfortunately, no. Another thing I want to ask Kubernetes, with my identity, can I, um, yeah, can I log into new containers? And he says, yes, that might come in handy later. Um, and now, yeah, so so I'm I'm checking for view rights again. Can I view uh, service accounts? Yes, that's very interesting. So here maybe. Um, maybe I can use some kind of privilege escalation when, when I also can see secrets in my namespace. And yes, I can see secrets. So, um, so this might be now um, yeah, a misconfiguration here in, inside of my, uh, my cluster where, where I am. And with a bit of luck, there are some service accounts that, that I can use in the same namespace. So with uh, kubectl um, get sa, I can list uh, the, um, the service accounts and I see, aha, uh -huh, the, the, there are some weird ones here. Um, the default is pretty much normal. This one might be the, the identity I'm working with right now, but there is somehow, uh, it is strange that there is a Jenkins service account here. So Jenkins is a CID, CICD uh, system, and normally CICD tools have uh, way more privileges. So I think I want to use this identity next. How can I do that? So I, I basically, I need the token of of that service account, and I get this um, very easily. So I first need the service account name, then I need the secret name, and next I get the token with a, a kubectl command. We can echo that token. And yeah, so it looks strange, but this seems to be a token in, in Kubernetes and, uh, and provides me with some kind of identity, the Jenkins identity. So what I can do now is uh, to, to run the commands again, but this time with the token. Let's have a look. Uh, of, uh, and, and let's see my commands again. So first of all, the um, list of all the things, and here I see, yeah, this Jenkins service account is allowed to not only view things, but also, um, yeah, edit things, right? create, delete, patch, update, and so on. This, uh, this is nice. 
So, but another thing I want to check is, am I cluster admin? No, unfortunately not. Next thing, can I create daemon sets? So can I create containers on every node? Yes, I can do that. And can I log into these containers? Yes. So this is now a point where I want to, uh, uh, to be very ugly and bad, and I want to create a privileged uh, container, uh, or not privileged, but, um, but a container that has certain, uh, uh, certain attributes that, uh, that are quite bad. I will copy this in here, and then we will talk about it. So what I want to create now is a daemon set. With a daemon set, I can create containers on every node. Um, and I want um, not only to create containers on every worker node, but also on the master nodes. And, um, and I can do that with this toleration. Um, yeah, it should be a small image, Alpine, but I know that Alpine by default is running as a root user. And what I want to do in addition is um, I want to weaken the isolation between container and container host. And, um, and I, I know that in this path there is some sensitive data. Uh, so, uh, so I want to mount this path into my container. So let's, let's do that. And yeah, I was allowed to create this demon set. Um, so next, I want to um, I want to log into this um, uh, this container. Uh, so I created now on every master and every worker, but I want to next log into. Uh, the container created or the pod created on the master. I can do that uh, with, with this command. Uh, I find the name. So let's have a look. And yeah, so this is uh, the, the, new, uh, the new pod name. Um, and with that, I can Log in and this command should be good. Yes. So uh, now I'm in this Alpine container, um, but I hope that I did everything right. And now I am a root user. Let's have a look. Yes, I am. Uh, user ID zero, so I am root. Uh, let's have a look here. Yes, this is actually the host name. It's still the same kernel version, uh, and so on. But am I outside of the container? Uh, unfortunately not. And, um, and a list of the processes, yeah. I'm definitely inside of a container. So again, from here, uh, I want to talk to Kubernetes, um, but, uh, but again, I do not want to use curl, but kubectl, so let's, uh, let's install kubectl first. Uh, or first curl, and then kubectl. It worked, and yeah, now there is this uh, this sensitive data inside of etc Kubernetes admin.com. So, um, without uh, this one, uh, I would have very basic. Um, um, 
um, privileges, but but this looks like um, like a uh, like a file uh, with which I really can escalate my privileges again. So let's let's use this one. And yeah, so let's have a look. Um, the, the list without the file was like this. Uh, so not very impressive. And the, the list of uh, access with this file doesn't look like a lot more, but the, the two first are quite tricky because uh, these symbols mean that we are allowed to do everything with everything. And, uh, and yeah, we can see that next with the question, am I cluster admin? Um, without this, um, this file, no, but with this file, yes. And now basically everything is lost. So we can wrap this up. Uh, um, very fast. So now I want to create a container that is privileged and can uh, can really um, yeah break out of the cluster. I will copy this in, and then I will explain. So what I want to do now is um, to create a daemon set again. So I want to create containers on every uh, node. Um, I want again uh, include the master node. That's why I use this toleration. Uh, it should again be um, the Alpine uh, container image, but this time it should be a privileged container. This time it uh, should, uh, should break up the uh, the PID namespace. So the isolation between process IDs is, is lost between container and container host. And with the command nsm, so um, yeah, I will break out. Oh, with the combination of everything, basically, I will break out of this container. So what we are doing right now is very, very, very ugly. And uh, yeah, it is uh, somehow it's sickening. Um, again, I want to get the name uh, of my bot. Um, and uh, so, bot name on the master node is this name. And so, I want to log in and uh, and I want to have a look if I really succeeded in, um, in breaking out of the container. So now I seem to be, uh, it seems to be that I'm root on the, on this, in this container, or at least uh, the, the pod's name is, is is this host name, but yeah, let's see. Um, um, first the user ID. Yes, I'm indeed root. Uh, it's again uh, the same Linux kernel, but now I want to see if this file exists. And yes, it exists. And yes, it was a central switch. And so the process list should now also include all the processes inside of, uh, um, of this node. And yeah, this time it is a huge list. And yeah, the last step is um, to, um, to start a container. So now I'm on the container host, so I do not need to use a cube cuddle anymore. I do not need to um, uh, to to use Kubernetes anymore. Now I want to fly under the radar, and I want to create my uh, my Bitcoin mining container 
without um, um, without um, the uh, the Kubernetes cluster admin noticing. So the the mining container should not plop up into uh, in the list of, of pods. And that's why I'm using Docker next. So with Docker, I can see there are a lot of Docker containers are running. And with Docker run, I can create a container without a Kubernetes cluster admin noticing because, yeah, this is now uh, created by Docker and not uh, by, uh, by Kubernetes. And with Docker LS, uh, Docker container LS, I can see, yes, it is created and working. Last thing I want to do is to clean up because I created um, some, some daemon sets and pods. And so this was visible to a Kubernetes cluster admin, um, but in, uh, in deleting the daemon sets now, um, yeah, we can have a look. I think I have to go out here. So now my work is done. Um, and, and yeah, now my hacker head is, is away. Now my head of, of the cluster admin is, and, and this, is, uh, um, this is now a, uh, um, a terminal of, of the cluster admin. And yeah, he wants to have a look what is happening inside of the cluster and lists all pods and all namespaces. And he doesn't see uh, that, uh, that there is any, any Bitcoin mining container uh, running right now. And, uh, and yeah, because we created it with Docker. Great, that was the demo. And so let's jump into the slides. Um, yeah, so what did we do? We started with our web application. Uh, it was uh, all about pinging servers and, uh, and but, but we saw the the help of command injection, we could execute additional commands. And with that, we could um, access via a reverse shell. Um, and, and yeah, then we were inside of the cluster, inside of the container in our terminal. Next, uh, we, uh, we saw that we had view access uh, for Kubernetes and we wanted to use privilege escalation to get some more access and to create containers. Uh, that was uh, thanks to, uh, to a misconfiguration. We were allowed to read uh, service accounts and secrets. And uh, with that, we could create a root container on the master node and, uh, and log into this new container. Now we were on the root container and he had also special access um, um, for a certain file. Um, so we used the host path and we weakened the isolation between container and container host. Um, and with that, we could do again privilege escalation and, um, and yeah, get cluster admin rights. With that, we could create a breakout container and log into that container. And here, yeah, everything is lost. We are not really anymore inside of a container. We are on the on the node, and we could start a a uh, mining container uh, with the help of Docker, so that the Kubernetes cluster admin couldn't see this uh, this mining container. In the end, we did a clean up um, so that uh, that uh, the traces were not there. Yeah, um, this attack path, when I, uh, I did it for the first time, I really had stomach problems. I really, really didn't uh, uh, like uh, how, how easy that, that was. Um, but 
it was only easy because this Kubernetes cluster was uh, very, very much misconfigured. And yeah, so what brings Kubernetes to the table uh, to defend against such an attack? Yeah, first of all, some container basics. So we do not want to secure one thing because the attacker is always in the advantage. He can pick his target, which means uh, the, the, he can search for the uh, weakest point, the weakest link. And so we call it defense and depth. So we have to secure everything and uh, in a layered uh, way. And uh, yeah, so um, we want to reduce the attack surface. We want to uh, work with the, the um, with the concepts or the principle of these privileges. And so for all four things we can attack, um, there is some countermeasures inside of Kubernetes. Uh, the whole based access control is some, uh, somehow the Kubernetes bouncer. And, um, um, and yeah, it is there to protect uh, or secure the Kubernetes API server. With the help of a role based access control, um, yeah, we can really minimize uh, the, uh, the privileges. Um, and yeah, we, we also have a vision here, a, a goal somehow, and that is um, yeah, to, to do not allow any access for any application running inside of Kubernetes and uh, no, um, uh, no privileges for users themselves to talk directly to Kubernetes. The vision would be to provide uh, good tooling uh, like CI CD tools, like uh, logging and monitoring. And with the help of these tools, a user is working with Kubernetes and never uh, directly anymore needs to talk to Kubernetes. The second topic is the, um, is the securing of the container hosts. Here we have something like a container prison. The pod security policies right now are deprecated, but they will be replaced um, by uh, another, um, another feature soon. Uh, what can we do with pod security policies? Um, yeah. We can deny a lot. Uh, we can ensure isolation. We can define that a container is only uh, having a read-only root file system, and so a lot of things possible. And in the end, uh, all of these things um, um, are, are allowing us to say that we can prevent this this kind of Kubernetes. Uh, sorry, this container output. Next, uh, securing the container network uh, with network policies. This is somehow the, uh, the firewall, the container firewall. And yeah, the, the clear best practice here is, OK, the, the network is flat. And so every pod can talk to everything. So but with the help of a default deny all rule, we can define the opposite, and so that we can then allow this the traffic. Uh, lastly, the securing of the uh, of the compute resources, and yeah, so we can do resource uh, resource management here. It is uh, somehow yeah the the limit of inside of Kubernetes. We can work with quotas and limit ranges. Um, so quotas for namespaces and uh, limit ranges for for individual objects like container pods and PVCs. So the question is, can we uh, with these things that that are already included in Kubernetes, can we mitigate the attack? Uh, and this is a clear yes. So 
And so my main, my main message is Kubernetes is secure, uh, although this, uh, uh, this, this demo was uh, somehow sickening. And so uh, already one of the mechanisms would be enough. Um, so whole-based access control uh, with, with the principle of least privileges or the, the port security policies would be enough, uh, the network policies and so on. But if we are doing it in a layout way, so if we enable all of these things, then yeah, really nothing. Uh, this this attack would not would really not be uh, possible. And yeah, so um, so we have a lot of things uh, we can use to um, to to mitigate the attack. For example, the first step. Uh, uh, the reverse shell, why was netcat installed inside of the container? This is uh, a bit uh, strange, this was uh, not, uh, not necessary. So uh, why was the vulnerability inside, so the, the command injection possibility in the first place, why uh, was netcat installed, and so on. So here we really have to ask us these questions. And then um, when we were inside of the container, we installed kubectl, for example. Why were we allowed to, um, to download uh, software from everywhere? Why, um, uh, why were we allowed to, uh, uh, to install new software? Um, then we did this privilege escalation. So why was... Uh, was the account? Why was the container allowed to uh, to read uh, secrets and, and service accounts? And why were uh, the wrong service accounts in the same namespace? Um, yeah, with, with all these questions, um, it uh, um, th this this privilege escalation wouldn't be possible. And and another thing with restricting the network, we could uh, we could restrict. Uh, and and uh, and deny the, the traffic towards the API server. There's no reason in the world why the web app uh, should be able to talk to Kubernetes. And so, with a container firewall or network policy, it would have been uh, prevented. And then uh, starting a root container. Um, yeah, again. Why were we allowed to talk to the Kubernetes API server? Why were we allowed to start containers on the master node? Is another question. And why were we allowed to um, uh, to create a root container? And all of this or, uh, could be prevented with network policies, all based access control, and yeah, pod security policies. The next step was, yeah, we were allowed to read uh, some files on the container host. Um, and again, this, uh, this could have been um, prevented with the help of port security policies. And so this pri privilege escalation um, shouldn't be possible. And at that point, when we were cluster admin, yeah, really everything was lost. We were allowed uh, to, uh, um, to create a privileged container. We were allowed to, um, uh, to use the host PID uh, namespace. So uh, in the end, um, it can be prevented uh, with port security policies. But, um, but yeah, when we have cluster admin rights, uh, we could also uh, delete these policies and yeah and in the end um, yeah we broke out and were able to uh, to run a container with Docker. so let's let's work together and think about uh, some kind of a checklist now when it comes to security um, yeah Let's, let's have a look at container host first um, and a couple of, of, of best practices. So good, um, good um, data center hygiene uh, 
would mean, yeah, container hosts would really only uh, would be dedicated, so they would not run anything else but containers. We could use uh, minimal immutable uh, operating systems. We can use runtime security tools uh, and restrict the access uh, to, uh, uh, to container hosts. Um, and yeah, with the reduction of the attack surface uh, as well, we, we need to update our servers um, uh, frequently so that they are always with recent packages uh, and, and so on. So the entire topic of server lifecycle management is very important. And yeah, the ATIC has, for example, their own tool for that. And this is the Ocarino. The Ocarino is, uh, is a lifecycle management tool. So what, what Kubernetes is for, for containers, the Ocarino is for virtual machines. When it comes to deployment, when it comes to um, configuration management, and when it comes to patch and release management. Let's continue with our security checklist. Then we want to secure Kubernetes as well. We mentioned uh, the, the four building blocks, uh, but yeah, let's, let's have a, a bit of a more of a checklist when it comes to good hygiene with, um, uh, with Kubernetes. Yeah, so protecting the Kubernetes components um, and restricting the access. Uh, so um, everything we talked about when it comes to Role-based access control and, and least privileges. We can enable audit logs and uh, checking the configuration with, um, with security benchmark. And yeah, we can, there's a huge ecosystem surrounding um, Kubernetes um, that, that can help with, uh, with making Kubernetes more secure, using GitOps principles, using an open policy agent, using a service mesh are only a few things. Um, the, um, the last thing of our checklist is the topic um, of uh, container applications and a checklist here. So this is basically good, good um, DevOps practices, separation of code and data, um, and so on. And yeah, having a look at, um, at for example, container sandboxing, neutral TLS, and so on. But I am a bit running short of time, so let's go to the summary. Yeah, the summary is, um, yeah, we can do a lot wrong with, with Kubernetes, but we have to, understand the, the, the problems and the issues. And I hope I could help with that a bit. Um, and then Kubernetes has a lot of mechanisms uh, that already helps. Um, and with the help of certain best practices, uh, I would say Kubernetes is a very good and secure tool. But we can always do better with, uh, with a lot of tooling uh, um, surrounding Kubernetes when it comes to, um, to image scanning and signing, for example, when it comes to policy agents and runtime security. And yeah, so with that, um, yeah, let's come to, to this slide again. And I would say crypto jacking is, uh, is in. It is, uh, uh, it is very popular these days. And yeah, what have Tesla and so on all in common? Yeah, they are not, um, uh, uh, not uh, helped by, by, by ATIX. And so ATIX, we are the uh, Linux and open source company and uh, on our, um, our slogan is simplifying the data center and bringing automation into the data center. We are doing a lot with classical IT, um, so conflict management like Puppet, uh, Ansible, Salt, Stack, Ocarino. 
but also a lot of cloud native um, technologies. And yeah, we have our own um, our own conference in fall, and um, yeah, maybe we will see each other there. Um, now I say thank you, and um, yeah, I'm open for questions. So, Andy, uh, first, thanks for the presentation. And then uh, you performed so well and covered the topic so comprehensively that there are no questions at the moment. Um, I think uh, there could be some questions uh, in the uh, aftermath. So maybe you can give the participants uh, some uh, some possibility to contact you to ask the questions. Um, yes, a possibility to contact me is definitely um, yeah my email. Um, that's uh, wills at atix.de um, and uh, yeah, I think we will also uh, make this these slides available um uh to to everyone and so uh for download and there are my contact details are with as well okay thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. um we as attics as uh, andy said are of course not spending our whole day and with attacking and defending kubernetes clusters we do much other things uh like uh, developing the Ocarino, uh, as you said, and the tool to bring your the management of your company's infrastructure to the next level. And uh, this will also be uh, our next webinar talk in uh, two weeks, I think. So stay tuned if you're interested in uh, better infrastructure. And uh, if this is not your topic, uh, on the 7th July, there will be a webinar on Puppet from our colleagues. So also stay tuned. And uh, yeah, then the last thing I can say is thanks for your interest. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the sun and uh, stay healthy. Stay healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.